Welcome back everyone, this is Erica with you today. If you remember from last week, we were talking about fast dormancy and how it helps to save battery life. If you don't remember anything about fast dormancy and you don't know what the power states are that I'm going to be talking about, please go back to the video from last week and check that out and then come back and join us. To be able to observe what I am talking about today, you need to have the Galaxy S, Galaxy S2, Galaxy S3, Galaxy Note, because Samsung has a proprietary mode, which is called service mode, that other phones won't have. And it also needs to be on the stock ROM, otherwise if you have CyanogenMod, mod, you won't be able to get to it. Keep in mind that what we are talking about today has to do with 3G networks only. That does include also HSPA Plus networks, or faux 4G, because it's just still a 3G network, but it's just a very fast downlink. The big question here is, do you have fast dormancy on your network, or do you not have fast dormancy on your network? And when should you enable fast dormancy if it isn't enabled by default, or when should you disable fast dormancy? All those are huge questions that I'm going to hope to clarify for you. So you saw that with my network AT&T in my area, I do not have fast dormancy. Alas, I was deceived. Fast dormancy really does exist for AT&T in my area. Later on in this video, I will show you a demo of how to exactly identify whether it is there or not without a doubt. So for the remainder of this video, all the examples that I show are actually very good examples of how fast dormancy works and are correct, so do not worry about that. In the video from last week, you saw how it would jump from DCH, which sends the most information and uses the most power, to FACH, to idle, and it would take 30 seconds in between each of those. Those 30 seconds is called a timer, a T timer. So going from DCH to FACH is T1. From FACH to PCH or idle is T2. And then if you support PCH on your network, going from PCH to idle is T3. Those are incredibly important when saving power, and each network can be different. They can choose to have it be 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever works on that particular network. So everybody may have something different, which is why it's important to go and check your phone. When fast dormancy is on on your phone, it also has its own timer. So just say that the timer on the phone for fast dormancy is set to 10 seconds. What will happen is that if no data is sent back and forth within 10 seconds, the phone will send out a signal to the network. Then the network decides what to do with that. It can decide either to put it in idle or it can decide to put it to a lower power state like PCH if your network supports it. The problems that you get with fast dormancy is when that timer is set too abruptly. So what will happen is that after 10 seconds, it'll send a notification to the network to change the power state. In some network circumstances, the network will comply and immediately put the phone to idle. That becomes a problem because just say that you are texting back and forth on something like Google Chat and the person doesn't reply within 10 seconds, it immediately goes to idle. That ends up being really incredibly bad. If it's on idle, it has to reestablish the connection, and then it has to use all those network resources and battery in order to send all those signals to get all the way back up to DCH. That is not cool. If your network supports PCH, then actually a 10 second timer would not be that bad at all. It would actually be very power efficient. As before, if the phone hasn't either sent or received data within the 10 second FD timer, then the phone can send out an FD signal to the network. Instead of the network putting the phone into idle, it can then put the phone into PCH mode. The advantage of that is that when you do see, receive another message, the phone can easily jump right back upward to DCH instead of having to reestablish the connection and waste a lot of resources. And also it takes away that latency of two seconds that it would take if it did go to idle. So you can happily chat along. So the final thread is to figure out whether your network supports fast dormancy or not. Supercurio created an application that's not to be confused with the fast dormancy toggle for the i9300 by Gokhan Moral. His app works really well to turn off fast dormancy. It works for the i9300, which is the Galaxy S3. Unfortunately, the Galaxy S3 doesn't have the secret menu under the dialer by pushing star pound 9900 pound 
to get into this menu here to turn off fast dormancy. Most other phones that are in the Galaxy line are able to go in and turn off fast dormancy that way. Super Curio's app Voodoo RRC tool not only lets you easily toggle fast dormancy on or off for the Galaxy S3, you're also able to easily access the system dump tool for Galaxy phones like the Galaxy Note that you can get into the system dump menu to easily toggle fast dormancy on or off. You also have easy access to your radio states. This is incredibly important because this application also lets you discover truly whether or not you have fast dormancy on your network. I found this incredibly interesting because I was convinced that in my area AT&T did not have fast dormancy. So indeed this application is incredibly important to use. Your first step to understanding whether or not your network supports fast dormancy is to see how your phone reacts between the radio states when fast dormancy is not enabled. So make sure that this box is not clicked on here. You need to go under your radio states and then really see what is going on. For me, as I said, mine goes from DCH, FACH, idle. Yours might go DCH, FACH, PCH, idle. So you need to really see what's happening with that. For mine, AT&T, it turns out they don't really have consistent timers. Many networks will have consistent timers. T1 will be 10 seconds. T2 will also be 10 seconds. So really observe what is happening so you can get a good feel for what happens without fast dormancy on. I feel that AT&T uses inconsistent timers, I want to call them smart timers, so that depending on maybe your network usage, the area that you are in, or network traffic, it can smartly adjust those timers, and it may be actually better for saving battery life. Your network may or may not have consistent timers, but that is all right. After understanding the patterns of what is happening with your network, go over to your application again and enable the fast dormancy check mark here. Then slide your slider to one second and hit apply. What this will do is that if your network supports fast dormancy, it will send a release notification to your network to ask it to change the power state. So now that this is enabled, let's go ahead and check out what happens with a web page. The thing to note is that with the Galaxy S3, you do not have to restart your phone. With the other Galaxy phones, such as the Galaxy Note, Galaxy S, Galaxy S2, you need to restart your phone in order to get this working correctly. So go to your web browser, pick a simple page like the Google web page, something that's not full of flash and let it load a couple times. Immediately as your web page finishes loading, start counting and go back under your service mode here. The trick is to see whether or not the behavior is different than when fast dormancy was disabled. If it is different, I can't tell you exactly what you're going to see. It may go from DCH to idle. It may go from DCH to FCH idle. I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen. But if you see a different reaction than what it was doing when you had fast dormancy off, you do have fast dormancy. What happens is that your phone sends a release message to the network and the network is then recognizing that and responding and it's changing the behavior of what is going on with your power states. So if you see a change, that is a great, fantastic indication that your network is indeed responding and does, has, does have fast dormancy. So that is going to be how you really know. So once you have discovered whether or not you have fast dormancy on your network, come back to this application. If you discover that your network has simple timers where T1 stays the same, T2 stays the same, I would recommend, of course, if you have fast dormancy, keep this enabled. Keep fast dormancy enabled, take your FD timer and slide it between 15 to 20 seconds. That is fairly reasonable for it to notify the network if there is no data transfer within that time period. That way it can send a signal for release to the network and not to be waiting too long for that. If your network is like mine and you don't have simple timers, you seem to have those smart timers where the network seems to implement its own type of fast dormancy without the phone actually having to tell it, to have a fast dormancy release, then I would recommend watching it. Do the same thing, keep it enabled. You can have it at 15 seconds and really see how your battery life fares out. 
So this has been Erica for XDA TV. Thank you so much for watching. You can follow me on my own channel, which is The Angel of Music 1989, where I do my own reviews. You can also follow me on Twitter, which is at I am Erica. I have a Google Plus as well. Make sure to rate and comment and subscribe to this channel and have a wonderful day. I hope that I really helped to clarify. I have set up a thread, which I will put down in the description here so that you can follow that. Should you have any more questions about fast dormancy, you can go to that thread and we can really discuss what you're seeing on your phone as far as power states to really try to understand what's happening with the networks. What we want to do is create a wiki that starts to log exactly which network has fast dormancy or doesn't. So there's going to be a lot in the works with this and please come and participate. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.